Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to show you how to actually get PostgreSQL set up on a Windows machine. Uh, I have a previous uh, tutorial series that I've done for Django where I talk about how to set up Django. And by default, it comes with a, um, a built-in database, but a lot of times you need more of a production-heavy database. Uh, a lot of big websites like uh, Reddit and things like that are using Postgres. So a lot of major, uh, really just, it, it's an open source. It's a free database system. It's just as popular as MySQL. And uh, it's really on the rise as far as what it can do. It supports uh, JSON by default. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and say PostgreSQL for Windows download. And the first uh, option here, I have this PostgreSQL. I want to actually download the installer because it can be uh, a nightmare not to do that. So now we need to actually select our operating system. I'm going to grab the latest version of Postgres. Um, and by default, I want to have a times 86, 64, because I have a 64-bit system. But that will support both. And now we're just going to simply say download now. And um, with Postgres, it also comes with this thing called PG Admin that I want to explain and show you guys in this uh, this video here. All right, it's just got five seconds left, and then it'll be ready to go. All right, so now that we have uh, Postgres set up here, the install is done. I'm going to go ahead and have the default directory, which is Postgres 9.6. And then it says data directory. Well, the same data directory. Now, here, this is an important thing. Um, this is providing a password. Now, keep in mind, the super user by default is this Postgres user. So you're going to want to keep that uh, in mind. So let's go ahead and set this up. Uh, right, and then the default port should be 5432. That is a uh, default. That should be fine. And I'm going to do a locale. That's fine. Uh, right, so now it's going to go ahead and it, the first install was actually installing the necessary distributables uh, that, that it needed in order for it to run. And now it's going to install the rest of the project. And I'm going to go ahead and just pause the video while it's doing that. All right, so now I don't want to have this stack builder thing um, to download additional tools. So I'm unchecking that. I'm going to click finish. Now, if I go to my Cortana and I type PG admin, I'm going to have this PG admin, uh, which is cool. It's a SQL uh, just helper because a lot of people don't like raw SQL, so it's a lot easier to use uh, an actual SQL tool in order to like create your database and things like that. So um, this tool is actually uh, pretty uh, pretty easy to use. I just want to show you real quick that um, we are going to be logging into our server. And if you double click uh, and then we say connect server, and this is where it will ask you for the password that we had created before. And I wanted to save the password. Okay, and click OK. All right, so now we've actually connected to our Postgres database on Windows. And this thing will run by default. So when you restart your system and things like that, it should automatically start back up. It, You'll have all the information that you need in order to, like if you want to create a new database, you just simply right click and create a new database. Uh, and it's uh, relatively easy to do. I'll just do it real quick. Um, so here's the create database. And we can give it a database name. We'll say example. And the owner is this super user, which is my Postgres user. But if you created more owners than uh, or and users, then you would have that opportunity there. Now, if we look under here, you can see, hey, examples here, but there's no table. So what if I wanted to add a table? I would go to my schema, public, uh, and then under the tables down here, I could say create table. Uh, and then once again, it's hitting the database. And now I can create a new uh, table, and I can call this just like example table. And then have a Postgres user. Um, we'll just do that for right now. Now you can see under the table, I have this table. Uh, and you can now create columns, uh, do indexing and things like that. A lot of that is beyond the scope of this tutorial series, but you know, for getting Postgres set up and running under Windows, um, this is you know, a pretty straightforward example, I, I believe. 
so make sure you guys check out my other content. Uh, I have a Chris Hawks uh, tutorial channel that a lot of people follow. There's also hipstercode.com. So if you want to learn more about uh, programming with Django and things like that, uh, or any anything that I talk about on my channel, go ahead and uh, hit me up there. And my YouTube channel, if you guys are interested, there's uh, over 62,000 people following me there. So just uh, make sure you guys uh, subscri subscribe there and uh, make sure you have uh, all my content that is uh, notifying you when I have new content. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.